A couple of years ago, Explorer Scientific announced the iExos 100 mount, specifically this little guy. This little guy is an eight pound mount head and it holds about a 15 pound payload capacity on it. Now this little baby EQ mount is belt driven, so it has some perfect features that you want in a small astrophotography rig. The only thing is, is people kind of forget that these are out there because everybody defaults to the Skywatcher or the Ioptron. And don't get me wrong, they're fantastic pieces of equipment. But don't forget about the Explorer Scientific variant out there too, because it just may surprise you how good it is. Tonight, we're going to be taking a look at this under the night sky for some astrophotography. We're going to be taking it out with the Rokinon 135 millimeter lens, and we're going to be shooting it at f2.8 for tonight. We're going to be attaching my ZWO 183 camera, and where the target is the Veil Nebula for tonight in Cygnus. Now, the Veil is super bright, but we are going to block out my Bortle 8 light polluted front yard skies with the IDAS NBZ high speed filter. Now this filter is going to give us hydrogen alpha and oxygen wavelengths to block that light pollution surrounding anything but those wavelengths. So we should be able to capture some really clear detail on the Veiled Nebula itself. This Explorer Scientific mount is going to be powered tonight by the ASI Air. We are going to hook up everything autonomously, but we are not going to guide as I want to put this to the test after we polar align it properly with the ASI Air. Now this mount does come with a lighter weight tripod. I, however, have the upgraded tripod with the azimuth adjusting plate, which is a phenomenal upgrade and I would highly recommend it. So my rig tonight is going to be a little bit upgraded from what you'll just get out of the box, but your performance will be similar as long as you're doing all the right things. So without further ado, let's get down to it. This mount may seem small and puny, and in some ways you're absolutely right, it is, because it's tiny. But this mount is actually small, but really powerful and mighty. This setup here is actually already over 50% really of its photographic payload capacity. But we shouldn't really have too much of an issue with this. We've got enough counterweights off the front. We've got it balanced really nice and smooth. And we've got the motor drives adjusted just right. Mine came with a little bit of backlash in the RA drive. And what you have to do, there's two screws on the underside here. You just simply loosen those a little bit. And you can slide that whole motor drive forward and backward just a little bit. And I had to do that to eliminate the backlash. These belt drives, though, are fantastic. They're small belts, but they work. They eliminate almost all the backlash in the gear train system, and that gives us even better tracking accuracy, especially if you want to guide. Now, tonight, I'm not guiding simply for the fact of you don't really need to at 135 millimeters. This little setup, though, is going to run you about $599 for the mount, regardless what you want to pay for your camera lenses or a small telescope. That is totally your choice. But the go-to mount is about $599. Now, the upgraded tripod will, of course, cost you a little bit extra, and some of the other accessories that you may want to purchase for this mount will also run you just a little bit more. 
This whole rig, though, is super lightweight and portable. This is one of the best little go-to rigs on the market today with this small Rokinon lens. A lot of people have taken a real liking to this lens. Is it the best out there? No, absolutely not. But you can get your adapters. You can hook up your Astro cameras to them. You can hook your DSLRs to them. They're really lightweight. They shoot at F2 imaging, which is absolutely fantastic. That's basically hyperstar imaging at F2. Now, on this specific lens, at f2, it gives my stars a really weird chromatic aberration, and I don't understand why. It could just be the speed of these optics are really maybe not configured for that one on this particular lens. So I have to actually stop it down to f2.8 to get nice pinpoint stars, but that's not really that much of a difference in the f ratio for really to make any difference for us tonight. The Veiled Nebula will be seated very nicely in the entire field of view of this thing. We'll be able to get the eastern and western regions and the star fields surrounding them with this field of view with the 135 tonight. The results of using the Explorer Scientific iXO's 100 mount actually proved really promising. The mount was tracking between two to three minute subs unguided, and that's pretty amazing considering the almost 10 pounds of payload capacity that it had on top of the mount at the time. Now obviously with guiding you can get way better results than I got last night. Now we only did get about an hour and a half worth of imaging because we started to get really windy and the clouds started to roll in and ruin the night of imaging for seeing and also for transparency purposes. But it, in all, if you're interested in the Explorer mount, it's actually a really great beginner astrophotography mount. For a lightweight refractor, if you put just a little auto guider on there, it's probably a perfect grab and go setup. And even my results with two minute unguided subs, that's more than enough to do unguided imaging and then stack, you know, 100, 200 of these and make several hours worth of an imaging session. So I hope that you all enjoyed that night of astrophotography with the iXOS 100. As always, stay tuned, clear skies to you.